As you would say, Mark, there was a second small victory the other day mm. when some French policemen actually had the bright idea of puncturing a dinghy, <laughs> which, you know, no doubt was greeted with wild mm. celebrations mm. by Priti Patel. But the overall story is mm. one of miserable failure on almost every front. Everything the government has said it would do to stop the flow, whether it's pushbacks or paying mm. France a load more taxpayers' money, mm. you know, or the Rwanda scheme just hasn't got off the ground. So I think... Priti Patel's era as Home Secretary is clearly coming to an end, but the Truss administration will be under huge, and I presume it is going to be her, will be under huge pressure to start actually delivering some results. Well, let's, let's look at it from Liz Truss's mm. point of view. What I don't get is that uh, I don't think there's any political downside to pulling out of the European Court of Human Rights. So why... Why do we accept the right of Albanian and Azerbaijani jurists, genius jurists, mm. though, because we all respect the Albanian justice system and the Azerbaijani justice system? But why, uh, why uh, uh, is it just not easiest to say, well, you know, we're not in the European Union anymore, we're global Britain, we're out in the world, so the European Court of Human Rights doesn't do it for us anymore? Well, I think the Conservative Party fundamentally is still quite establishment minded mm. and they're very scared of another confrontation with the liberal establishment, with mm. the judiciary, the House of Lords, left of centre newspapers, the BBC mm. uh, and depicting them as kind of knuckle scrapers. They haven't really got the bottle for it, I think, so soon mm. uh, after Brexit. But on the other hand, this is an issue that conservative leaning voters care so much about, particularly in the red wall seats, yeah. which will decide the next election, that the pressure is going to build and build and build. Yeah, and I, w I would have thought it's not difficult to calculate where your interests lie. Do you, uh, this, this is a, both in traditional Tory seats and in the red wall seats, this is a winning issue for the Conservatives. Mm. And I understand, I had the Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper tell me in a sort of similar situation about the Human Rights Commission in Canada, oh, I can't be seen to go against human rights, Mark. Uh, and I said to him, that's just the, the word, that's just the name of the thing. Nobody cares. And it's mm. exactly the same with the European court. All those people you mentioned, in the end, uh, the people don't care about the European Court of Human Rights. No, and even uh, when Theresa May was Home Secretary, she floated the idea mm. of us bailing out of this thing, mm. and that was pre-Brexit. Uh, so the idea that it's some hard right idea that Britain takes back control over its uh, mm. policies on, on border control, uh, I don't think would, would pass muster among the general population. I think in establishment circles, they, they would raise absolute hell and you would have Emma Thompson and Hugh Grant and the parade of lovies. But in <laughs> political terms, you might think that sounds like a, a pretty good uh, gig for the government. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Tories end up in the run up to the next election in a couple of years time, having this as their manifesto commitment, will anyone believe them by then? Do you, do you know, if, if I had some political cause I wanted to advance, mm. I would love to be attacked by Emma Thompson and Hugh Grant, because mm. that, that, that more or less, you know, confirms that this is just some she-she metropolitan yes. thing that out there in uh, the rest of the UK, people just look at it as a, uh, a sovereignty issue. They, they think as a free nation, you should have the right to determine who crosses your borders. Absolutely. And, you know, even if the Rwanda thing starts, it's yeah. fairly clear now, it's not going to be at a scale that will mm. sufficiently deter these crossings. I mean, personally, I think we should use Ascension Island, which has no native population and is UK sovereign territory, to build a really well, big complex. And the, 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 like Australia says, yeah, yeah, no. no one who comes without the right papers gets to live here permanently. And that would send a signal it's not worth paying people smugglers three, four thousand pounds a time.
No, you're absolutely right there. We've got, I mean, I, uh, the, the Australians have done a deal with Papua New Guinea and mm. Nauru, but we actually have more islands mm. that, are, that are sovereign UK, ter- the, the, what we used to call in less sensitive times, crown colonies. Mm. I don't even know whether the European court would be able to say, you're basically saying, uh, look, this entity is the United Kingdom and colonies. Mm. Uh, can you tell the government you can't move someone from England to Ascension Island when they're owned by the same sovereign?